So a couple months ago, I mounted this Jeep bumper on the back of my VW pickup or caddy, and it came out real nice. The bend just about perfectly matches the uh, width of the car, as you can see on both sides there. The main brackets actually were longer, and for the Jeep it had another hole out here, so I had to drill an extra hole at the top and then underneath this bracket on the bottom and then I just cut that extra metal off there. Wasn't too hard but I did have to make a cardboard template across that back roll pan. Uh, mounted some lights, I had to make a custom little license plate bracket and then I just took some LEDs. Oh, there you can see the LEDs along here to get uh, lights on my license plate to be legal. Came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, by the way, if you do backup lights, I highly recommend using a relay. Don't wire them straight to the uh, backup lights because you'll just blow your fuse all the time. Okay, but the new news is the front bumper. I finally fabricated one and it came out real nice. It was real simple. It's a nice, simple, clean look. It's a single tube, uh, one and a half inch. It's actually inch and a quarter ID. Uh, steel pipe and I took the brackets off a mark II cabriolet which has the five mile an hour bumpers which are little shocks uh, So it was a tube instead of the square like on the mark ones. Uh, I thought the round uh, Looked a little nicer. So I just cut those off Put a bend in the pipe to match the front of the car and welded it on. Came out real nice. I put a little tab there at the bottom so I can mount some lights in the future. It looked there's more clearance there than it looks like. So there's enough to mount two six inch round lights there. So there's the original um, Cabriolet shock strut or shock. Uh, bumper mounts and I just cut them off right here. I actually just used a hacksaw and then uh, I'm sorry I cut them off up here and then scalloped that out with a grinder and then there's a, a Weld bead running in here that you can't see underneath the crinkle coat bought a can of crinkle coat um, At Napa came out pretty good. This is uh, I buggered that up after the, I put the coat on the paint actually went on real nice It's the VHT um, I'm sorry, valve cover, the valve cover paint. Um, end caps came out pretty nicely. Cut it at just a slight angle there to try to match the car. So pretty happy how that came out. It was real simple. The hardest part was getting this bend here to match the front of the car. There's actually uh, six small bends. So I kind of plotted out on the front of the car and let me zoom out here a little bit. So I started one small bend here and here, and then one small bend about here and here, and then another one out here. So you can kind of see, and that was just trial and error. I bent it a little bit, held it up to the car, bent it a little bit more. You may notice this bend that's right here, it's just a hair off, but standing out from the car, you don't notice it so much. Um, my green paint didn't come out quite the right color. That ceramic stuff is too humid today to paint with ceramic. Uh, so I should have waited, but uh, it was intended to match the roof and the uh, brake calipers there. Uh, I might be able to polish it up a little bit. But the basic of the, well, uh, basic of the bumper was real simple. And I think it looks pretty clean. Uh, not something that you see very often. I liked it a little bit tighter to the car. You could make those shock mounts longer. Um, if you wanted to, just not don't cut off as much. Um, in any case, just wanted to show the two bumpers that I got on uh, my caddy. Maybe give somebody else an idea uh, for when they're doing their build. Take care.